So there is so much to discuss here. We invite back infectious diseases specialist Dr. Susie Hoda, who joined us for You Sound Off this morning. Thank you for sticking around. We appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, my pleasure to be here. I do want to revisit the story that we just uh, talked about, and we are waiting on word from NASI to say whether or not that mix and match could potentially happen. Um, for those that are sort of confused about the mRNA, so the, the Pfizer and Moderna versus the AstraZeneca, the viral vector, what would, how does the body react differently to them, or, or is it not enough in that that mix and match really makes sense? So really what it's talking about is the way that these vaccines were developed. So the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccine are quite similar in really what their vaccine components are and how they would stimulate your immune system uh, as a result. Now, the AstraZeneca vaccine is quite different. And so there's a potential that different parts of your immune system get stimulated when you get the AstraZeneca vaccine compared to when you get either Pfizer or Moderna. And so that's what some of the discussion is about in terms of like, what are the benefits potentially? And there could be some added benefits of getting two different types of vaccine because perhaps a broader immune response would be stimulated. Um, but then also there's the question of, will it actually be as effective because you're, you know, giving two completely different types of vaccines um, and using one as a booster for the other. So that's kind of explaining what the rationale is behind um, the mixing and matching and, and how it really relates to what's within those vaccines. Gotcha. And if we do move forward with a mix and match, do you see this as a positive then for vaccinations moving forward here in the province? I do. I mean, it really opens up the flexibility of where you can go to get your next dose, you know, what it is and not having to worry about matching, you know, Pfizer and what's available at the time. Our supplies are excellent at the moment at, for Pfizer, uh, for sure, but also Moderna is reasonably good. Less so with, with AstraZeneca. So as supply goes down, uh, it opens up possibilities for people. There was so much concern, Dr. Hoda, this weekend when Health Canada gave the thumbs up to the pushing of the expiration date. So there was that magic May 31st date that a lot of people had circled in their calendars saying we got to get that AstraZeneca into the arms prior to that date. And then that got moved to July the 1st. How concerned should people be about the change in a month and getting that dose in their arms? That, you know, that doesn't concern me at all, actually. This is not that uncommon with different pharmaceuticals. Um, you know, at the time that AstraZeneca was approved and, and ready for release, it, they had limited time to really show stability of a product. And there was really a push to get the vaccine out to market because of the crisis that we're facing. Over time, they've now had the ability to test the stability of the product. And so they've taken that information along with some modeling data to show that it is indeed safe to use it for a longer time. Um, and so I feel, I feel comfortable with with that decision, like I said, this is not so unusual for pharmaceuticals, um, you know, in our, our everyday life. Okay, that is good to hear. Uh, the school announcement, it is imminent. It is coming down any time now. Uh, and there's been a lot of back and forth um, and varying opinions on this. Uh, what, what's your take on getting kids back into the classroom? I think we definitely can do it safely, at least in some parts of the province. And, you know, we've got the advantage not just of case counts coming down really nicely, but also vaccine being rolled out well and teachers having access to vaccine and some older students, too. But the beautiful weather, I mean, we can have school outdoors in some places, even indoors on rainy days with windows open when it's possible. I think it can be done safely in, in most settings. Um, so I'm really hoping we hear a, a positive announce, announcement in that direction. Okay, and Dr. Hoda, before I let you go, uh, really encouraging numbers that we saw coming from the province yesterday under that 1,000 mark for new case count. Um, just, you know, when you see that, there's a sort of a barrier and you think, okay, are we near the end? So I'll pose that question to you. Do you think we are near the end? I, I hesitate to say the end because you've got to define what the end of this pandemic is. And so, I, you know, there's going to be recovery work. There's also variants that are on the horizon that we're still going to have to stomp out. There's still work to be done. But that said, I think we're definitely heading into a, a good part, a good phase of the pandemic with vaccine out, with cases coming down. We just have to keep with doing what we've been doing so far and following the public health guidance. Um, and, you know, taking more of a cautious approach will help us in the end, even though it feels as though we've been in lockdown down for a very long time. Like 12 years, yeah. <laughs> Dr. Hodo, appreciate all of your time, your insight. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Time now is 7-11. Where are we going? We are going, let's say, upstairs? Upstairs, upstairs. We're going upstairs.